So here we are. Uh, welcome, everybody. So today we have Sherelle Martin and David Leary, and we're going to be talking Melio and paying bills, our favorite subject. But we're going to learn how to do it fast and easy. So I'm excited about that. Liz, you want to remind sure. people who you are? Sure. I'm Liz Scott. Um, I am an accountant in Oklahoma, and what our firm focuses on is small businesses who are in the QuickBooks ecosystem. So anything e-commerce and really house too. So I, I enjoy the housey world. Uh, property management is just really fun and requires some apps. Heather, you want to introduce yourself? Sure. So I'm Heather Satterley. I have, I actually have two farms. I have Satterley Training Consulting, where I do process automation and consulting around third-party apps. And then I have Back Office Ally, which is an accounting or bookkeeping and tax farm. So we're doing, uh, we're doing books and we're doing taxes. <laughs> so that's kind of what I have going on. And um, yeah, so that's me. And I am in Rhode Island and Liz is in Oklahoma. Yes, definitely different weather systems right now. I've got rain today. You have rain today? I do not have rain today. I have, it's beautiful and say this is our third heat wave this summer, which is very unusual for the Northeast. Sherelle, I'm so excited to have you on Appy Hour. Thank you so much for joining us today. And you're down in, are you, have you, are you muted? Am I muted? No, you're no, not. You're okay. you. oh. <laughs> <laughs> so where are you located, Sherelle? I am in, uh, in Maryland, right outside of Washington, D.C. Like I'm like three steps from the Washington, D.C. border. So for those who aren't from here, I always say we're from the DMV, which does not mean Department of Motor Vehicle. It means <laughs> Maryland, Virginia, because we're all right here in one big melting pot. Well, I would love to come visit you and come eat. You can show me all the great places because I'm a crab fan. I was going to say you are mm, welcome to that. come get some crabs. <laughs> oh, and, and last time I was in Maryland, I had the best lobster roll I had ever had in my entire life. Oh, really? Do you remember from where? I could look it up in my history because I saved it. I was like, this is, it was, it melted like butter. The outside of the bread was this perfect crust and crisp and, and then the inside of it was just melty crab and it was phenomenal. Well, now I want to know where. Oh, okay, I'll have to, I'll have to see if I've had it or not. Mm -hmm. I'm more of a crab person than a lobster person. Yeah, I love, I, I'm more of a lobster person than a crab person. And I was thinking of you, Liz, because I was kayaking with my husband last weekend. And um, I went over a giant blue crab that was sitting on a rock. And I, I thought about reaching in and grabbing the crab. And then I thought that would probably be a really bad idea. But I did think of you. Appreciate that. You know, we don't have any crabs here in Oklahoma, but we do have, and there was even a TV show about Oklahoma noodlers. Yeah. Yeah. Is that where you go and grab like the catfish out of yeah, the mud? I have yeah. to say, I mean, like really it's a thing here in Oklahoma. And so I know people who have done that their entire life. They, that's not a big deal. Yeah. They stick their hand inside of a, a hole and pull out a fish. That's what you do. Oh, that's precious. Not that's me. Not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm not doing that either. No, <laughs> not, not at all. So Sherelle, you have a, a lot of accolades. Um, you know, you're a top 50 cloud accountant. You're a member of the Intuit TWN. You're a member of the Accounting Salon, which David, you're also a member of the Accounting Salon. So Yay. we're really excited to have you. And I've known you for several years. I think we met in Baltimore probably five or six years ago at an Intuit event. And I remember because I think it was one of my very first events I ever spoke at and I was so nervous. And do you remember that I was talking at the event and I was wearing a sweater and I went and had lunch and came back to the room to present and I had a tag hanging from my armpit. I do remember that. You, <laughs> I do remember that. Saying, and I was, it was like the second time I'd ever presented it. I was like, well, it went really well. And I came back to lunch and I'm like, Heather, you have a tag hanging from your armpit. And I've given my entire talk with this tag hanging from my armpit um, in front of, you know, 100 people or so. <laughs> wow, that was well, five years ago. Goodness gracious. It was a long time ago. Yeah. And David, yeah. 
Thank you for joining us. You also have been around for such a long time in our industry and worn so oh. many hats. And I feel like probably everybody on this call knows you. Yes, um, and the so green thanks. shorts that were infamous for years and years. And that green yeah. suit. You had that green suit too. Green jacket. Yeah. 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 Jacket. Yeah. Green jacket. I had a gold jacket. Remember the gold jacket? All of these yeah. Jackets. It's funny that you have a, a story about Sherelle in a t-shirt or a shirt or a blouse. <laughs> I as well, at the end of the, I think it was the first QuickBooks Connect, I think. At the end of that, yeah, it was I, my first one. Sherelle wanted my shirt. And so I literally took my shirt off and gave her my shirt at the- On the spot, at, off the at, at the end, yes. So- That's awesome. Yeah. Wow. What did I say? It was like app Rockstar. What it was says, it? I rock apps. I rock front. apps. That's what it was. The, that's right. That's the right. back is like a bunch of little icons and stuff. I just cared about the front because it said I rock apps. Uh, and I, I was have... like, oh, how can I get one? He's like, you have to have been special. And I was like, oh. you had to go to the hackathon, but there was no hackathon. It was over three days ago. So I gave you the shirt. But like, gosh, it's just like, like, when do we get to have these events again and see each other in person? No. Right? Um, right. I miss them. Right. Mm -hmm. One yeah, of these days. So I do have to ask, though, David, is that the only time you've given your shirt off? to somebody who's a fan <laughs> sounds like there's a story there I, I think so just that time just that time i've given out other shirts but not the one i was wearing right then before so. <laughs> that's great so. all right so thank you to our champagne sponsor right networks for sponsoring happy hour um, they're the leading cloud hosting provider for accounting professionals and a huge thank you to Melio for uh, sponsoring this episode. Freeze and easy accounts payable for small business. So super and excited. We are. We're hearing about Melio everywhere. So thank you yeah. for being here to educate our community. Thanks for having us. Yeah. So what we're going to do today is we, we just welcomed you. So that part's over. <laughs> And now uh, we're going to go ahead and, and um, Sherelle's going to take us through, she's using Melio with uh, some of her clients and she, she's going to take us through what the benefits are, who's using it, and then we're going to raise our toast. And then uh, David's going to go ahead and give us a quick demo of Melio. And, uh, um, and then we're going to talk about the coolest thing we did this month and preview our next episode. So we got a lot to do over the next uh, hour. So you ready, Sherelle? You ready to take us into? Sure, yes. And we're going to do a bit of a Q&A too. So yeah, definitely. Okay. So we're going to talk about online vendor payments. <clears throat> gone are the days, or we, we wish they were gone, right? Gone are the days of writing checks. I don't even have checks, which has been a problem lately because I've actually had people that are like, I want a check. And I've had yeah. to go and figure out how to send them a check. And luckily with Melio, I can do that. So um I know, isn't that crazy? And and it hasn't it hasn't been that like I don't have any physical checks for any of my businesses. Not for for Saturday Train Consulting, back office that we don't have any checks, um, or even Happy Hour for that matter. So everything's going online. If you've opened a so, bank account in the last like couple of years and you tell them you don't want checks, it just blows their mind. Like, how can you open a business bank account and not order? Yeah, checks? they still don't get it. They, they stick, yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I agree. have checks, but I don't even know. I've probably, because I started eight years ago and I actually did get checks. But I think I've probably, I could probably count how many checks that I've ever actually physically written. Because there are some places that would only take a check before Milio came out. And it was like, well, I got to figure out how to, I got to send them a check. So I still have a whole box full of checks, but I've probably written max 15 in eight years. Wow. And I don't even know if it's that many. That goes to a really good point, which is what are our clients looking for? Do they want checks or do they want to get out of that? And I feel like whenever you're talking about being able to manage your cash flow, you want to be able to know when is that payment going to be drafted. And that gets you away from checks because you can hold a check for a long time. You can forget to mail the checks. If you're like me, they sit in my office, those checks, those few checks that I do have to write. And I, I hold them, not intentionally, of course, not intentionally, but just out of who's going to go to the mailbox. <laughs> I mean, like the little thing in my neighborhood, our, our mailbox doesn't even have the flag on it. So, you know, though we've, we've even transitioned away from that on our, our home mailbox. So then that means I have to drive, I have to get in my car and go to the mail. 
So they just sit here. And then you definitely want to get away from being able to have those checks that, that are sitting in your desk. So I feel like our clients are looking for online solutions. I agree. I, do. I think so too. I think I, I, I started another business maybe a year ago and, and it, the person, one of the partners was like, we do, what do we need checks for? Like, do we, we don't need checks because everything is online. And I'm like, you would be, you are right. And again, this was pre Melio. And I'm like, you would be surprised how many times you actually need a check. Now, hindsight is that this is no longer in existence and we didn't need the checks, but that's a whole nother story for a whole nother hour. I mean, I, I agree. Heard, so Heather, go to the next slide. Cause I want to ask some questions here. All right. So Cheryl, we have you here. And so we want to ask some questions because you are a pro advisor who is actually using Melio and you've gone through these different questions with your clients. And so we want to shoot off a couple of questions to you to see what your clients were looking for and what you ended up doing. So you want to advance it to the next one so we can play Q and A. <laughs> So why do you feel like your clients are using Melio? What's the reason for connecting? Because I make them for one. Um, <laughs> <laughs> in simple terms, it's, it's not up to them. So the, if, we, if, if they hire us to kind of manage the payable side of the house, then they have to, have, they have to use Melio or, because I'm not writing the checks. And I've had people say that. They're like, can I just give you the checks and you just write them and sign them? Um, no, I'm not doing that. That's not my responsibility. That's your responsibility. And so the main reason is, so what, what it is, is they don't want to pay, they don't want to go through the bank because the bank still sends a live check. They want something more automated. And so they look, they're looking for a system that makes this, that's easy to use, it's simple, there's not a lot of, um, there's no dashboard. They don't need all the approvals because really it's just them. So it's me saying, who do I pay? And they say, pay these five bills and that's what's paid. So they don't need like a big approval process. And they, but the main thing is they want it to be simple and easy, but they don't want to have to pay a fee for it as well. And so that's kind of how Melio came into our house. And so, like I said, I make them do it if I'm going to manage to pay the bills. Um, it just so happens that I opened up QuickBooks one day and it was there. And I was like, ooh, like a kid, like, ooh, it's this scheduled payment. What happens if I click it? <laughs> but it's easy. <laughs> right? Like a little kid. And, and I was like, oh, what is this? And so I ended up down a rabbit hole. I went on their website. I set up an account and everything came over. And it was like literally once I went back into QuickBooks, it was like three clicks. And, it's, and it was sent. And I was like, that was super duper easy. So it, that's kind of how we started using it and, and we've been using it ever since. Um, saves clients fees, because I have clients who would pay wire fees to send wires, because um, sometimes they have people who want a payment electronically, but they don't want to give them their bank information because they think it's still in the back end or they think you have access. I'm literally having a whole email thread with a client who wants to pay me with her credit card, her Amex card. And I'm like, I don't, it, I'm, you're just paying for a subscription. I'm not using your credit card for that. You need to give me your bank information. And she's like going back and forth. And I'm like, I don't have access to your numbers. The system is secure. Like it's, it's really simple and easy. So it's kind of one of those types of processes where they, people don't want to give out their bank information. They don't want to pay the fees but they want something that's simple and easy to use. And I think, I feel like Melio does just that. So I, I think that you explained, you know, even a little bit of how clients are using it. So it's directly inside of their QuickBooks. <laughs> You're paying the bills for most of your clients or are they paying their own bills or a combination here? So if we process the bills, then we're doing it. And when clients are paying their, their own bills, most of the time they're using either a credit card, they already have some type of automatic debit setup or going on, um, or they're paying it through their bank themselves. So the, but the ones that are like, look, hands off, I don't, I want you to deal with it. Then we process them through using the Leo. Oh, I love that. And you prepared some things to share with us. So Heather, you want to advance to the next? Sure. 
slide and I'm answering a question. So now I'm done with that and I'll click the button. Like there the chat keeps popping awesome. up and I'm like looking. <laughs> <laughs> we have great questions here. We do have some great questions. <laughs> so this is, I kind of spoke to some of these before. So um, like this was kind of the before milieu. They were paying, some people pay contractors through their payroll company. So they're paying the extra per person fee to be able to have to process their, so that those people can get paid electronically. And these are not necessarily um, like 1099 contractors who really probably should be employees. These are like true vendors that are providing a service for them and have other clients that they're paying this way. So they're paying the extra fee there or they're paying fees to wire the funds to them. Um, and, or they're trying to figure out, they're actually literally writing lab checks and mailing them to people which to me is so baffling. Um, even corporations that still do live checks makes no sense to me. And so there's this whole process of, you know, all these different steps, it's multiple steps, unnecessary steps, paying for checks, paying for fees, that all of that can kind of go away. And so the next slide should be, should be, because I didn't do these slides, should be the after milieu, <laughs> which is where they save money on the fees. It's a more efficient process. Um, it saves them time and using and time as far as going through the whole workflow. Um, and so it's, it's just simpler and easier to use and it doesn't have to be complicated like at all. And you know, to that point, Heather and I tried it cause we wanted to, yeah. <laughs> like you said, click the button. So we clicked the button to just go through the motions and it really is easy. Like we were able to send off a payment within, I don't know, Heather, two minutes. Yeah, it was so fast. It was so fast. And that was um, from the first click the button all the way to the point that it sent a payment. Right. Yeah. I even like how, because I have, we have a couple clients who are on zero and it doesn't integrate with zero, but I can still use the Milio to process their payments and even to set up scheduled payments. Like one of our clients moved to North Carolina and, and their new landlord was like, we don't take checks. And so you have to pay us electronically. And she was like, well, can't we pay it through the bank? And I was like, well, no, because the bank still sends a check. So how do we pay it? And so we were able to use it Milio to set up the payment and I could actually schedule it out because it's rent. It's the same day every month. It's the same amount every month. Um, I don't need to go in and do this every single month. I can just set it up where it's all actually recurring, which is super, super helpful. And now can you do that slide here? Oh, sorry. Oh, I, can you do that, Sherelle, right through QuickBooks, or is that on the Melio platform? I know we're going to talk a little bit about, because there's two, right? There's the Melio that's packaged inside QuickBooks, and then there's the Melio that you go out to MelioPayments.com, and you use the platform out there. Which one, I mean, are you able to do the recurring payments in QBO? Yeah, I know if you can't do it inside of QuickBooks. You can only do it in the platform product. But, but what you David can correct me if I if I miss something and I need to go play. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, there's definitely the way to think about it, and I don't want to jump ahead or anything like that. But um, the way I like to about it, you have Melio, which is a standalone app, the way you usually use most apps, and then you have the QuickBooks Bill Pay powered by Melio that lives inside of QuickBooks. And for my sake of conversations, I like to call it purple and green. The one in QuickBooks is green, obviously, and the other one, as your drink, and everybody, it's purple. Right, everything's purple. And the way I think about it, it's the same train tracks, right? That's the same, it's the same payment rails, everything about it's the same. And in fact, if I bring up some screens side by side, you'll see the screens are identical. One's just green and one's purple. But the train cars on those train tracks is slightly different, right? And so for example, you're talking about recurring payments, that one's only in purple milieu. But QuickBooks has the ability to pay multiple bills at once. So that one's only in green. So, so it's the same train tracks, different train cars. Over time, you might see more similarities, but ultimately, right, QuickBooks is a different product than Melio. We're not going to have the same features of QuickBooks and vice versa, but you have the freedom to switch and move and dance between the two, which is really the magic. Fantastic. Cool. Do you want me to switch to the next slide, Sherelle? Yeah, because that's probably my after milio and see if, if I missed some, some afters. Yep. So saving on the fees, they pay vendors faster. Um, the scheduling of the future payments, which is probably my favorite part of it. It's easy to use. Um, it's not costly, right? So they don't, you only pay if you use, I think the credit card feature, but if you're using the bank or the check option, 
you don't have to pay a fee. And for those people who still want to send checks, there is a check option where you can still send a check. I don't know why, but <laughs> you can still send a check for those people who don't want to do the electronic payment. Um, and so, the, and they, so those are the flexibility of how they can pay. And you can pay them with a check versus a, um, electronic payment, or you can also, and from your side, you can process it from your bank or from your credit card. And so in the instance that the cash, you don't have the cash flow to support something that needs to be paid right away, you can always connect your credit card and then pay it from your credit card and then pay it from your credit card at a later date. I see this as such uh, a, a great option for, you know, those smaller companies that really needed a way to automate their accounts payable process and just couldn't afford it, right? They couldn't afford the, the really expensive, um, you know, uh, bill.coms and things like that, that, you know, they charge about as much as it costs you to send a checkout manually, right? But you're doing it electronically, so the process is easier. Yeah. What I love about Melio is even if you send a check, if as long as you're paying with your bank account, it's still free. So you're saving like the check stock, the envelope, the postage, all that. Yeah. And I, you're just clicking a button. I will, awesome. you know, to, it feels like this is more for everyone. Like lots mm -hmm. of people can use this feature. This mm -hmm. isn't just a specific clientele group who has, you know, a specific need, you know, approvals or whatnot. This is just everybody needs to pay bills. And they want to do it easily. Let's not spend a lot of time doing it. Yeah. And Let's I like that you a lot of money doing it. Just get it done. Yeah. I was saying I like how it also sends you email notifications. So when the, when the payment is processed, you get an email notification. You can get a notification when the person, if you do send a check, because I did have an instance where we had to send a check because the company was like, you mailed the payment here. And I was like, well, how can we pay electronically? And they were like, you mailed the payment here. And I'm like, okay. So we mailed them a check and, and got an email when they cashed the check. An email came through that was like, oh, yep. cash, your payment to ABC company was cashed. That's like, now that's kind of cool. So good stuff, good stuff. Do you want us to advance to the next one? Yes. Let's do that. Oop. Mm. A little preview there of the drink. Oh. I had a little. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> so it's time to raise a toast to Emilio. Yay. We have Yay. a very cool drink. Very cool drink. So it's the Emilio Politan, and it's gin with cucumber, cucumber tonic, lavender syrup, and cucumber slices. I did my and very best to make it look like the picture. <laughs> you did very well. Mine's, so mine's clear. And the reason mine is clear is because I have fresh lavender. I have, I have lavender growing in my yard. So I went outside and I grabbed a handful of lavender and I put it in simple syrup to see if I could make my own infused lavender. So we'll see. Oh. <laughs> so so like. I, I had to improvise on mine as well. I think I have cucumber gin actually instead. So I had to uh, oh. improvise a little while. Finding the, the ingredients is a little bit tough, but um, yeah. And I'm going to apologize. So there's some background on this drink, actually. The drink was created before, you know, we recommend happy hour. And the reason why, so Melio, when they came, um, so they're based out of Tel Aviv, Israel, but the team in the U.S. is all based in New York City. And when they launched, they were really narrowly focused on a niche, you know, like I always talk about niches, right? And they really went after the wine niche and food and beverage niche. So a lot of the members of the team are either experts in wine or mixologist. And so a team member of Vive, he created this drink. So this is a custom real drink that he made. Just, it's really the official drink of Melio. That's well, awesome. That's kind of cool. And so, yeah, I had so, a hard like, time yeah. finding the ingredients. But the, and when I went to the store, yeah. the guy was like, you, this is a fancy, fancy gin. And I was like, oh no. <laughs> so, so, so in learning next time, we'll have to plan ahead and like order these ingredients, you know, or, or go to a, a very trendy hipster um, yeah. beverage shop to get some of these ingredients. Uh, I, cucumbers are easy to find though. You can find a cucumber. <laughs> easy. It's good. Yeah, it's the good. cucumbers are yeah. great. So right now cucumbers are growing in Oklahoma like crazy. So mine was actually from my mother-in-law's garden. Wow. She was happy to share it with me. And I told her it was for a fancy cocktail. And then she was like, oh, my garden cucumber? Yeah, it's famous now. This is good. This is good. <coughs> All right, Heather. So, All right. how do we know if anybody like that's on the Facebook Live or is, you know attending? 
<laughs> in the Zoom. How do we know if they have a drink right now and they're also toasting? Well, you know, this? it's funny that you say that, David. We get comments and requests for us to release before the episode what our drink recipes are. So there are some viewers who from time to time will post <coughs> what they're drinking and it'll be very similar or the exact cocktail. All right. If you have it or you make it this weekend, take a photo, tag me, tag Melio. Yeah, definitely. Yes, I love that. All right, so... Heather, you want to forward us to the next one? Because I really think that we're getting ready to. Yeah. To uh, move it here because we want to see a demo. We want to. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. So we'll uh, click through a couple slides here that Heather will drive. And um, it's always that like, hey, you click and I'll watch type of a thing. But we'll, uh, we'll get through a couple of quick slides here. And then I'll, yeah, I'll give a really fast demo and really open the floor to Q&A. I can see a bunch of questions coming in through the chat. Um, I can't read it because I probably need to make the font bigger now. So but we'll, uh, we'll go through that. But really, this is the question we get. Like, what is Melio? So if you click, move your slide here. Boom. Essentially, it's just easy to use BDB payments and receivable. So when I say easy, I want you to think like if you've used Venmo before, if you used Zelle, if you used PayPal, right? And in fact, the founders of Melio were at PayPal when PayPal bought Venmo. And so they ran the engineering teams for the, as peer-to-peer -peer payments just really exploded right over the last five to six years, peer-to-peer -peer payments. Everybody just sends money now with Venmo back and forth. And the, they really fundamentally always question like how come small businesses can't just easily send money back and forth? And so that's really the big driving force of Milio, right? Is they, how do they make it as easy as possible for small businesses to do and fundamentally do for free? Like if you, if you really use a lot of those services, you're allowed to send that money back and forth for free. Now, if you want it instantly, there's a fee, right? If you want to have next day deposit, there's a fee. There's fees for some parts of those services, but the fundamental basic premise is easy to use, money's being moved for free, right? So if you go to the next slide, Heather. And so who's Melio for? So if you think about a sliding scale and you could probably click from like free and easy-ish. And, the, and I, the reason I put ish is because You'll see in a moment why. And then expensive and complex, right? So from the free and easiest side, if you click, you got like you're using the bank website. Yeah, it's free, but you have to log in and type everything a second time. And it doesn't sync to your accounting system, right? You have printing paper checks, handwriting paper checks. They all have their own little cost. Then the expensive and complex side, you have this, if you click, super expensive, AP enterprise level software, right? You have five approvers and a second approver and you approve the bill, then another department approves the bill payment, then a CTO and a CFO and a VP all have to sign off to get a payment out the door. Super expensive, super complex. But if you click again, most businesses need what's on the left, right? They, they, that's what most businesses, and arguably it might even be 95% of the clients you have don't need that expensive and complex. They need what's on the left side, right? And what's happened is over time, if you click again, I've always felt there's been a gap in the market. Like there's always been a gap between how do you do something for free for the left side, but it gives you some little bit of payments. It gives you a little bit of approvals, right? Just enough without going overboard on the right side. I think I had an accountant or pro advisor talk to me the other day and they said for most of those on the right side there, it's like squashing an ant with a hammer. Try is not necessary, right? It's just, it's overkill. So it's funny because I've always felt like there was something in here. And if I look back at the very first QuickBurst Connect hackathon, you guys know Jamie's from HubDoc, right? HubDoc's an app a lot of people use. The Jamie's, they're at the very first QuickBurst Connect hackathon. And I actually told them, and there's a YouTube video of this somewhere where they pitched it. I was like, build like this. Like what fits in the middle here? Like how do you, like, I challenge you to build that at the hackathon. And how do you, how do you build it? Because it's got to be free because the bank website's free. The people will not use it. They're going to opt into free, but give them the functionality they need, right? Without going overboard in that you know, expensive complex. And so what happened is, you know, in this, I really, that was, when was the first QuickBurst Connect hackathon? Eight years, seven years ago now? Seven and a half years ago? So I've always felt like there's this hole in the market for something in between these two. And that's really where Melio comes in. So if you click, Melio is going to be the product that's going to be for all of your clients. You're always going to have some client that has super deep needs, super complex. Melio might not be a fit for them. But all your other clients that are trying to use the bank website, trying to use paper checks, we are the right fit for them. They're going to put them on Melio, right? And the way Melio has been able to do this is 
um, offer the base product, which is set ACH transfers for free, mailing out a paper check for free, is because Melio figured out the business model of allowing people to pay bills with a credit card and making a fee for just that. So it's kind of like a lot of, if you've ever used Evernote, right? Evernote has that kind of premium model where as long as some people on Evernote pay for Evernote, Evernote can be free for everybody else, right? If, if just a small percentage get Evernote premium, kind of that's amazing. As long as some percentage of people pay some percent of their bills with a credit card, it enables Melio to be free for everybody. And that's how Melio, so Melio is free, but there's a fee if you pay by credit cards. And we can get into that a little bit more through the demo. But to kind of understand where Melio fits in in this grand, bigger picture of the world. And I don't think I have another slide, right? We were going to screen share. I don't know what's next. I agree. I think you're right. Yeah, I think you're ready to do your screen share. All right. Let me just do that here. So we have a lot of really good comments, and, and it feels like there's several people here that are actually already using Melio. And they're just giving lots of good feedback and their experience so far. That's awesome. Awesome to hear. I'm glad uh, the fans showed up. It's always good. <laughs> Is there any questions that kind of maybe we should pause and answer now before we jump in deeper? Was there any questions on maybe the two slides or? Uh, I think I have one, but I'm going to wait for just a minute so you can okay. keep on going because uh, it, it, well, let me just ask it. So it was asking about connecting your bank account. So somebody wanted to know if you could connect a personal bank account. My answer was you get to map your bank account so you could, but then I'm going to add a question onto that and say, do you have multiple accounts that you can choose from? Yes. Yeah, so I, I think technically speaking, you could hook up a personal bank account, right? Um, there's a lot of, uh, and you've talked to people, they commingle their funds. They don't ever open a business checking account for their business, right? And so technically, yes, you can connect those in. Um, sometimes it can uh, trigger um, risk warnings, right? Because it is just for business to business. And so if people connect a personal bank account and maybe they're transferring money to another personal bank account, it could cause some delays in approvals and the funds being moved a little bit. But in general, yes, you can, because there's a lot of people that do that. They're just like, yeah, I'm a subcontractor. I just have you, everything's commingled, right? Now with that said though, now that you can get a free bank account in QuickBooks, nobody should ever have a commingled personal bank account for the business anymore, right? Can we all agree on this? Like there's zero excuse not to open a business bank account because you don't have to go anywhere. You could just do it from QuickBooks, right? I think is uh, a way to think about that. So let's jump into Melio. So I have Melio open. This is just my uh, browser here. We've recently rolled out an accountant's a dashboard for accountants. So I, I'm an accountant, but I only have one client. So I only have one client on my dashboards. But if you can imagine, if I had 10 clients, they'd all be listed here and I could see the status of every client. And the navigation of Melio is pretty straightforward. We have the way to, to choose the companies. We have the accounts payable, accounts receivable to get paid, and we can go into that in a moment. And we have um, contacts, and then we have settings. And the settings is like you'd see on every other app, a way to connect it to QuickBooks, company settings, and in our case, because we're a payments app, ways to designate your payment accounts. So let's just go into my company here. Let me take a look here. And this is my real company, you know, catch into my real QuickBooks. And we'll go into here and let's just pay a bill. Um, so if you say come in here, there's a couple things that have, I have, I'm notified of, right? Pending approval. So there's a bill that somebody put in, it's pending approval. Um, there's a payment that failed for some reason. Um, I have some, an overdue payment. So like I created this bill in QuickBooks, app ER via QBO. So let's pay this payment, right? So I'm going to click on this bill. It's going to bring it up on the screen. I'm going to click schedule this bill payment. So I can choose to pay with any of the bank accounts that I've hooked up and I've connected a checking account. I've connected it through my debit card. I've also connected a different checking account. And then I also have connected two different credit cards. I have my business credit card and a personal credit card. So I have all these options to pay. It doesn't matter how I pay. The vendor is still going to get an ACH or a check, but I have freedom and control of how I want to pay my bills. Right. And now again, like we talked about Melio is free. So if I pay with my uh, checking account, right? I do an ACH. I use my debit card. That's free. If I use a credit card, there is a 2.9% fee for that, right? So I'm just going to choose my checking account. I'm going to hit continue. I'm going to pick the date I want it withdrawn from my account. Um, I guess uh, the 12th is probably good. And then I'm going to leave the memo invoice number app ER via QBO. And I'm going to just hit continue. And as you notice, because I use my bank account, the transaction fee is zero. It's free. And I'm going to just hit confirm and schedule payment. 
and I'm going to say done. And what's happened is now that payment has moved from my inbox being a bill I have to deal with. So it's no longer here. That $90 is no longer here. And it's moved to the schedule because it's now been scheduled to go out the door. Now, eventually, I'm just filtering this to make it easier. Eventually, this is going to be taken out of my bank account and move over to paid. Right? And so as it moves over to paid, this is where I can see the status of that transaction that's gone out the door. And I can see, oh, this was either uh, like in this one. So this was like uh, when it was created by somebody else or it was deleted, it was moved through the system. I can see um, that it was delivered through a bank transfer. I go back in time. I had this vendor before I was paying. She was getting a check. So let's see here. Yeah. So I can see on this transaction, like a paper check was delivered to her and when it was deposited, right? So I have that audit trail to see how that went through the system. So it's pretty straightforward. You, like, you get the bill in, you could actually take a photo of the bill with Melio's app on the phone. You could put a bill in, you can manually type it in, but the best way is just have it sync with QuickBooks and just come on. And so those same screens, picking the bank account, setting the date, and leaving a, menu, a memo, are the exact same screens inside of QuickBooks. They're just green there. And you can just do it inside of QuickBooks. You don't have to leave to come over to Melio. Um, and I'm going to go back screen. Whoops. My mouse scrolled because I was on the wrong. One second. I touched the mouse wheel and I was not on the screen I wanted to be on. Sorry about that. And so if I go back over to my uh, inbox here. So I just want to quickly show like what an approval workflow feels like. So normally you'll get an uh, for this case, my accountant put this in, but I have a limit on my accountant. My accountant cannot, actually I'll show you that really quickly. I'll go into my settings and show you the uh, manage users. So my accountant, Erin Wexler, so I have her invited to my Melio and she, that's not good. Ah, see this is the problem of doing live demos. Right, let me go back in here one second and it's users and hit new. I'm saying so instead of adding the user, so you can, a small business owner can invite you as the accountant and they can put a limit on your approvals, right? So my account, I put a limit of a dollar. So she can pay any bill on her own that's under a dollar, but anything else I need an approval for. So she put a bill in for target here. It looks like for $180, but she was able to create the payment but she's not, she can't approve the payment. So I'm, I'm going to get that. So the small business, in your case, this would be the small business owner. They would see this payment in their media. They would get an email notification to approve. And all I have to do is come in and hit approve. And then that goes out the door. Like I'm going to decline this because I don't actually owe target any money. Um, so for target, and I'm just going to decline that. And so I don't want, I don't want to approve that payment and have it go through the system. So the best way to think about the approvals in Melio is think about the olden days of handwriting checks. Like you do the bookkeeping all week, you'd write all the checks, then at the Friday, at the end of the week, you take the checks to the business owner and the business owner would sign each check. And that was the approval process, right? The bills they didn't want to pay, they didn't sign the check, you didn't mail them, right? And so that's kind of the way to think of the approval process. You'll schedule all the payments in Melio, all week, all month, whatever. And then the business owner, when they're ready, can go in and just hit approve, approve, approve. And so they're the gatekeeper before that check goes out the door. So it's a pretty, pretty straightforward approval process on that. And then the only other thing I want to quickly touch base on is the credit cards, because this is, a, this is a little bit of a new concept. Nobody's really done this before, right? And I think there's three major use cases for the credit cards. One is you just have those clients that want points. They have the points card, right? I, I talked to an account or bookkeeper that was in um, Miami, and they have a client that just wants that American Express black card. So they run everything through American Express for everything, right? You have um, another use case is you want to pay a non-traditional item. So mor your mortgage or your, your rent, right? Your business rent. Usually that landlord's going to make you pay with a check. Right? Well, now you can pay with a credit card, extend the float on your credit card statement to get, you know, and you get to pay your bill later on. But now you could get points. You're paying for non-traditional things that you could never pay with a credit card before. But the third use case I think I like the best is you can set your own terms. So if you think about COVID, right? If you were a fine dining restaurant, right? And you had to switch and become a to-go restaurant overnight, basically. So you had to go get plastic forks and phone boxes in, you know, overnight. So now 
If you went to the restaurant supply house and say, hey, I need foam boxes and plastic forks, they probably weren't going to give you credit because you're a restaurant in times of COVID, right? But at the same time, you're a restaurant and you're like, I'm not going to pay you cash. I need my cash. So the business owner could pay with their credit card. They get the supplies they want because the vendor's getting what they want, which is a check or an ACH as fast as possible. And now the business owner has those supplies, those foam boxes, plastic forks, so they can actually um, run their business, right? And so it just gives you a way for you to set your terms with a vendor that maybe won't give you terms. Um, and then the other thing is you can actually pay with a personal credit card. Emilio, you can pay your bills with that. So that'd be like a, you know, eventually you'd have to journalize it out and that's going to be an owner's investment in the business, but you can pay bills with a personal credit card as well. And to do this, this is where there's a fee. It's 2.9% fee to pay bills via credit card. And that's, that, that's the gist of it without like doing more demos. I think I definitely would prefer to have more Q and A. It's a little quiet. There's not enough dreams. No, I love that. That I think that everybody was just holding their breath because that holding was breath. Yeah. Uh, really, really good explanation of how it's going to pay directly from the bank account and then also understanding how the credit card plays into it and so tracy was asking does it matter whenever you're paying your vendors what kind of bank account they're using no and that's the beauty of with of melio right it, and it shouldn't the, the vendor is going to get their check or ach it just doesn't matter and you can should be allowed to pay any way you want it doesn't matter Right? You're like, if, 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 let's go back to like I was talking about Venmo. If you're going to transfer me $100 on Venmo, Liz, I don't care if you used your credit card. I don't care if you hooked it to your bank account. I don't care. I don't care if it's money you had stored in Venmo. I just care that I get 100 bucks now on my Venmo account. Want right? the money. <laughs> Want the money. And so because of that, they've eliminated this like, we only accept checks. Well, that means I have to pay you the way you want to be paid. All that's gone because Melody was in the middle, right? So you can pay any way you want. The money goes in, but it goes out to the way they want it. And so the first time you pay somebody, Emilio, we'll send them an email that says, do you want to be paid ACH? Do you want to get a paper check? Or do you want to get it faster by hooking up your debit card? And That's so, great. So and you know, Deborah's got a really good question. She's asking, uh, I, I, well, her question is, is, does a client sign up through uh, QBO directly and then do they invite you so I think that what she's really asking is does she have access to the Melio account and visibility if her client signs up so a little complicated answer to that one so that one the easiest way is for you just to go to purple Melio so go to meliopayments.com sign up add your firm and then get your, you'll get that dashboard and on that dashboard, there's a button that says new company and you can just add your clients there and then manually, just like you connect any other app, connect them to QuickBooks Online. And then it doesn't matter. If somebody's in QuickBooks Line and they pay, they'll be paid. If they're in Melio, you just do the dance. You can skip back and forth, whatever's the right solution for each client. Now, if you come from QuickBooks first, this is a, a little complicated explanation. Whoever clicks it first is going to be listed as the owner. Mm -hmm. So, and we talk about those train cars, right? approvals, users are not in the QuickBooks one, right? The QuickBooks Melio, the green Melio. So that, that business owner would have to go over to Purple Melio, sign in with their Intuit login, get in and then invite you as their accountant. And then as soon as they invite you, you they'd show up on your dashboard. So it's a little bit of a dance. So it's, sometimes it's easier, I think, for you to start from the QuickBooks side and then go down, down, down that route. And we actually, by the end of the month, like we're in a beta right now, but at the end of the month here, first week of September, this will be fully launched. And when it's fully launched, we'll, when you, even if you don't know if they signed up, we will use, we'll do some logic and detect, oh, they already have a million account because they paid in QuickBooks or something like that. And then it'll go through like a, an invite dance. Like, hey, Liz is ah. claiming to be your accountant. You know, do you approve her? And then, then it'll show up on your dashboard. Okay, I like that yeah. because I have a client who before it was an integration to QuickBooks, they are using Melio and they are so happy with it. And so I was wondering, how am I going to be able to see it? Will you just answer that question? Yeah. That's brilliant. <clears throat> so um, Lori has a question. She's saying, is the approval process also in the embedded QBO version? It is not. So it this is, is one of those train cars that are in yeah. one and not the other. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So it feels like you're going to have, it depends on how many, um, steps that you need to take or who all's involved as to whether or not you're going to choose the green or you're going to choose the purple. So more options in the purple, easier to use in the green. Does that yeah, I think it's the right fit for your client. You might have a client that's during QuickBooks, right? And 
they have their own AP clerk and they're just, they're in QuickBooks themselves. You tell them to stay in QuickBooks and do it. You have another client that needs approvals. You're going to put them in purple. You're going to have a client that they never touch QuickBooks. You only let them approve the payments, right? You're going to put them in purple. It's, you have the flexibility to do what's right for each client. But the nice thing is it's the same product, right? You're not it's, having it to It syncs be, up, right? So yeah, it syncs, whatever's done yeah. in one still ends up in the other. The other. It's yeah. just, how did you go? Did you go left to go around the block to get there? Or did you just go straight down the alley? Yep. Awesome. That's great. So I'm sure. I'll two separate the products. You're yeah. the one who's actually using it as yeah. the accountant for your client's behalf. So I was getting ready to ping you and say, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's helpful. So I ended up landing on it because it was, I guess they wrote it out in QuickBooks um, to some, you know how they roll out it to some people to see what it is. And so I ended up getting to it that way first because it was there and I had, I didn't know, I had seen, you know, I'd seen their name in places, but I had never went to their site. I just, for whatever reason, I just didn't go to their site. But once I got, was in QuickBooks and saw it and then clicked the button, it was like, Ooh, what's that? And so then I ended up going over to the website and then doing it that way. And so I've done it actually both the setup part I've done mainly through the base website. I've done it mostly that way, but as far as processing, I process everything through QuickBooks. Like I never go into, because the clients that I have when it don't have a full approval process, it's like, it's me and them and that's it. And so I haven't had to go out and set up different users and different approvals and all of that. So I've stayed, the only time I go into that product is for the person who uses a different software because it doesn't integrate with them yet. Okay, and so that was one of the questions that we have here is, does it integrate with desktop? And my answer was was purple. Of course, you can go and do that directly on the website. David, do you have but a different it answer? Instantly. Yeah, it yeah, not I not at no, this time. Wrong. Yeah, so we're, we're just QuickBooks Online right now. We have no integration with QuickBooks Desktop or Zero or Sage Intact, etc. Like, like it's all things I want to do, right? Like we're on this journey together. It's still early, and in. And uh, we want to do these things, but but I kept doing one at a time. But you can still use right? Nelio on the website. Yeah, you can totally use yeah. it, and then it'll just come down to your bank feeds, right? Mm -hmm. So you can still use Nelio. It's just you're not going to have that integration that you know everybody wants in integration. Yeah. Right? Okay, and, so there are still questions that are rolling in. Heather, do you want to no launch problem. our poll so that way people who are yes, I do find out? Absolutely. So I've just launched the poll. Thank y'all. You're welcome. Fantastic. As we're moving along, these are getting to be questions that um, definitely are above my ability to answer. So I feel like, you know, at this point, I would definitely reach out to David and ask for probably a more of a one-on-one uh, -on -one Q and A. Or a demo. Yeah, and that's what I did because I found it first. Yeah. And I was just playing around. I almost screwed up something and everything. And then I was like, hey, David, like, I need you to do, I need you to show me what I'm doing wrong and help me fix whatever I messed up because I, I've, I've reached my peak as far as knowledge goes. And so <laughs> early, once he explained, because the purple and the green was very confusing. And so once he explained it, it was like, oh. So if for anybody who's on the chat, because I can't follow it, is it, and you're like, have a lot of questions or something doesn't, just go ahead and schedule or you could, the yeah, time. Yeah. It'll definitely make it a lot easier for you. My email address is right here. Whoops, this side. <laughs> right, there you go. And just, you know, just say, hey, I was at the uh, happy hour. Just let us know. Yep. Like, and if you, there. if you're answering yes on our poll, I'm going to send your contact information to David. Oh, after beautiful. Perfect. So perfect. you are going to get a pretty long list here of people that you're going to be. That's reaching exciting. Out. You always want, you always want a lot. <laughs> yeah, that's fantastic. You know, I, I mean, this is the reason that I like Nelio is it's easy and it's not one of those apps that you have to jump through a whole lot of hoops to understand it. It's like, it's online payments. My clients, whenever, where they're using QuickBooks online, one of the first questions that they have is, okay, I can accept payments from my my customer so ar is in quickbooks online where's my ap yeah well we didn't really have an easy ap until now no we do and an and affordable ap yeah that's so Super. true yeah. everybody's looking for something affordable so Definitely. thank you All right, guys i'm going to count you down on the poll if you haven't voted um please do so five four three two and one i'm gonna go ahead and end that thank you i will be sending along 
your information if you asked uh, David to reach out to you. So uh, Liz, did you want to show our coolest thing? Shall I share my screen? And yeah, we'll go ahead and share your screen. All right, just show it's a the good coolest one. thing? Yeah, yeah so like... this is one of those questions that, that I'm being asked. What's the difference between Loom and Zoom? So <laughs> I thought it would be fun to talk about what are the differences. And Loom is like, everybody's kind of hearing this now that we're all online. Everyone's kind of send videos to each other. And Loom is super cool. So if you're awesome. using it, you know how easy it is to do. But Heather, will you switch over to the next slide? Because I want I to show what the differences oh. are here. Yeah, so why different. would you use Loom? Why would you use Zoom? So Zoom is like what we're doing right now. We're in a screen share environment. We're passing it back and forth. There's lots of ability to have multiple presenters. And you can have this ongoing dialogue in order to maybe work through an actual problem. But what if you just want to share a video? We're all super busy. We sometimes have the exact same thing that's over and over and over again. And if we had a video that maybe walked a client through, how do you connect bait feeds? You know, what things do you look out for? All of those kinds of things. We could actually have a Loom library and we could send over that video over to our client. Now we could use that Loom video to maybe be really specific and look at one particular client file, or we could just have a, Here's how you connect bank feeds, or here's how you connect Melio, whatever it is. And so you can send over that one video. The other thing is, is that it's gonna be great for demonstrating and training. So like I was saying, step by step by step. And they can watch it at any time. You can have a library of uh, videos that are internal or for a specific client, and then you can use those to send out over and over. Maybe it's something that you need your client's input on, if they see a video of your face, sometimes that makes them react more than just a boring email. So those are some of the reasons to use Loom. And then as far as Zoom, that's like that one-on-one -on -one meeting. It's the team meetings. And so there's really different purposes here. You can record a video in Zoom. While I'm working with some of my clients, sometimes I hit the record button and then that is now their document of how do I go back through and and maybe Liz said it really fast, I didn't catch it all, now they have a document to go back through. So you can record your Zoom meetings, but if you just wanna send a step-by-step -step training, Loom is really a nice tool to use uh, to be able to capture how-to videos. Plus, Heather, I think, did I put in there the price of it? I think you did, I think we have one more slide. Yeah, it's like it's pretty cheap. So you can opt into, oh, here we go. That's the library that I was talking about. So here's, yeah, yeah. here's a library where you could go through and you could see, um, this is just a screenshot. So this isn't my actual library, but you can see you can create libraries and they would have specific uh, titles and that's where you can send it off. How do I reconcile? Okay, send it over. What are you looking for whenever you're reconciling? Maybe it's an internal Loom library and you wanna to say to your internal team, you're not finished reconciling, because this is one of my pet peeves, until you've resolved all of the outstanding issues. So sometimes you just need a, a walkthrough and just a reminder. Yeah, here we go. So the basic is free. So I would say sign up with the basic, try it out, and then you can always upgrade. But then to be able to get that library, $15 a month. So you can share those libraries and then, um, you know, anytime that your even your team says, how do I do something or a client's asking for it, just put that link, you can put them in Slack. I know a lot of people here are using Slack. So you can take that yep. Loom link and upload it to Slack. It doesn't have any login credentials. So you can just share a Loom video. It can go it to- It used to have a direct link. It used to be like, and I think it must be in one of the paid versions now, but it used to be, have a feature because when I first signed up, I found out about it two years ago from someone at QB Connect. And the first time I did it, it was like it integrated with Slack where I could actually type in the middle in my Zoom profile. I could say, send it to this Slack channel into this Slack, into this Slack team and this Slack channel. And it went right over, but it's gone. So I'm thinking it's in one of the paid version, but Either way, you can still copy and paste. Yes, that's what I do. I just copy and paste. <laughs> so Liz, is, can I, with, with, if I make a video, I can like, do like Zoom or draw attention to the thing I'm about to click on. Can you do all that fancy editing stuff and then put my face in the corner of, as we record it? Or is it just like full screens 
just it's just basically a recording recording like like doing screenshots no it, it can it's a full recording and yes you can still have your video in the okay. corner yeah. and you know um in contrast with with zoom you know you're the little rectangles in loom yeah. you're a circle it's kind of like a default so, setting. But I'm, I'm embarrassed that I, I've never tried it. Like, sorry. I use this app, which is very, well, very you similar. Share technology. <clears throat> I use this app, which is very, very similar to Loom, called Cloud App, and um, it does exactly the same thing. It also has the enhanced editing. It's a little bit cheaper, um, but uh, it, it does exactly the same thing, and I love it. So that's another option um, that you could look at in in addition to Loom. <laughs> I'm so Rob was saying, cast. what? Loom, Zoom, Doom, Gloom? <laughs> Doom, Gloom, Doom? Yeah. Suddenly. All right. There. So let's get back over yeah, here. Yeah, let's talk about what's coming up next. Let's do it. So if you want to see this recording, it's going to be live very shortly over on our website. So you can always hop over to our website. The uh, Facebook Live is going to, of course, be something that you can go watch that recording over and over, and soon it will be on YouTube, and if you want to watch any of our other videos, they are also on YouTube, and you can sign up for the Happy Hour Lounge Facebook group, and one of the things that we do in the lounge is we let our, our participants who have came in here, like David with Melio, and have conversations directly with you, so it's just a nice place to ask more questions, and then Heather, you want to go to the next one? Of course. Yeah, so coming up, we're gonna have fun box. So finding the right payment for your clients. So this is a big conversation that you know some of us are having directly with our clients now related to um, how are they gonna survive maybe even the next year. So um, definitely relevant now, but always a good conversation to, to have some insights as to what funding to choose. Definitely. Anything to add, Heather? <clears throat> no, we've got a great lineup over the next uh, five episodes. So we'll, we'll look forward to seeing all of you on those episodes um, in the future. And a huge thank you to Sherelle and to David and Thanks to for Emilio us. for sponsoring the episode. And, uh, and to our, our Champagne Sponsor Bright Networks as well. Absolutely. Thank you for yeah. having me. Yeah. I've always, I've wanted to be on here for a while. And I was like, I don't know what to talk about, but here I am. Here you are. Oh my Thank you for being here with us. <laughs> so I am honored to be here with my drink oh, and my fancy cup. And your yeah. fancy cup. I like your fancy cup. <laughs> Admit, Shrell, well, maybe they can have us back can again. Oh, so maybe they like can. Do this again. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for taking time out of your busy days to join us. And we'll see you guys in just Bye, two everybody. weeks. Thank Bye, everybody. Thank you. Bye. Bye.